Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're actually going to talk about comic books. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to talk about the comic book industry. We got a couple of stories here. The first one is kind of big news. It sort of might support the rumor that uh, DC Comics could be on the chopping block. Uh, apparently, Warner Brothers is jobbing out a bunch of their IP to Dynamite Entertainment to do comics. That would include Thundercats and a bunch of uh, Cartoon Network stuff. And people are like, well, so what? It's not the main DC Comics superheroes. I'm like, yeah, but historically, if there were any comics to be produced of Cartoon Network characters or Thundercats or any of the other stuff that Warner Brothers owned, it went through DC Comics. You own one of the largest comic publishers in the country. You publish your own stuff. Right. Until you don't. Until you might possibly maybe be rethinking this whole comic book publishing thing and you're testing the waters, mm -hmm. kind of like Disney did with IDW to see if Dynamite can handle it. I don't know if Dynamite can handle it. I know IDW couldn't. IDW couldn't, but uh, I don't think their standards are as high as uh, Disney's are. So uh, we'll talk about that. And then we're going to talk about... Um, Polygon being really late to the party. Uh, Polygon talking about how all these comic book creators now, the comic book industry is in trouble. Oh my God, you don't say. And all these comic book pub or all these comic book creators, right? They're leaving their publishers and they're going out on their own. They're trying to find alternative ways to do comics. And oh my God, guys, it's really, really bad. Comics is a bad place. If you said this five years ago, you were a literal Nazi. Well, people have been doing this for years, but they don't mention that. They never mention it's that. It's just that they're, they're, they're ones that are, they're allowed to talk about are suddenly going to try to do what everybody else has already been doing. And now we have to give them high fives and back pats. Uh, yeah, so this is a like... pat on your tushy. Feel wh better about yourself. What the hell? Like, seriously. Like I'll do this... a reach around. Hold on. That's, That's what's all over Spider-Man. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> That's a sticky web fluid. Uh, did you ever see, that? Did you ever see the, uh, the panels with... Uh, because the coloring wasn't very good. Well, maybe it was intentional, but uh, Peter Parker's testing out his web shooters in his room, and Aunt May sees the sticky white fluid coming and leaking from underneath the door. She's like, Peter, Peter, what are you doing in there? <laughs> no. It's like, oh, what's this sticky white fluid from under the door? I'm like, man, Peter, he must have been pretty backed up. That's all I'm, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Like he's why are your socks always crunchy? He's an incredibly <laughs> he's an incredibly frustrated spider boy. Um oh my god. There's yeah, people are like, I don't get the joke. I'm like, it's good, it's good you don't get the joke. We're gonna we're gonna talk about that. So before we get into it, not that, but the comic book industry. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants, guys. If you do you get a woohoo. Woohoo. That's all the woohoo you can muster? Yeah. My Kiki's not feeling too good today. I'm not. That's my that's my best woohoo. That's your best woohoo. This will make you woohoo. We're 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 looking at bringing I'm shadow just binders. Be back. Glad that everybody can get a woohoo at all. <laughs> I feel like poo. I feel like poo hoo. Poo hoo. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Uh, shadow binders three. We're working on. We're gonna be doing pre orders through our website. There's mm -hmm. a whole story behind we why. We will explain. We will explain when we do a launch video for it, like an official launch video. I might I might go ahead and put it up before the video though, but um. The long and short of it is, is I don't, uh, I don't trust the crowdfunding sites. No, with good reason. <laughs> and with good reason, we've had some interesting experiences, but uh, yeah. So we're going to be uh, doing Volume Three, which contains the last of the web comic version of it. Uh, it's like the first half, and then the second half is all new. Yeah, all so new it's the second half is what I'm most excited about. Yeah, we've so, been waiting to do this for a long time, and I'm very, very excited about it. And it takes we can place do it on right. a train. Yes, there's lots of lots of steampunkiness going on, and we actually can. Spend the time and do it right. And that was one of the things that frustrated me immensely about working on Shadowbinders as a webcomic was we never had time to do it right. So let's uh, talk about this. Maybe uh, maybe Warner Brothers doesn't have a lot of faith in, in DC Comics doing anything right because they'd probably turn Lino into a trans girl or something, you know, because that's what they're talking about doing with uh, Superboy. So, yeah, uh, I got this actually from Bleeding Fool yesterday. I got uh, tagged in on, on Twitter, but CBR has an article up. They're making new Thundercats and Powerpuff Girls comics and a whole bunch of other stuff, too. Uh, so it's not just Thundercats. It's the Flintstones. It's the Powerpuff Girls. Space Ghost. Oh, I like Space Ghost. Johnny Quest, Wizard of Oz, and We Bear Bears. And they said there are more coming. So they basically got the animation license. The Hanna-Barbera, the Cartoon Network, the Rankin-Bass, and um, 
you know, again, that normally would be like, well, so what? It's just the license stuff. The thing is, is that every other time there have been Thundercats comics and stuff, you know, in the last couple of years has been, it's been DC comics. Mm -hmm. DC comics has done them because Warner brothers now owns Rankin Bass. Um, so the cartoon network stuff, they were, do they were doing cartoon network comics going back into the nineties. They were doing Dexter's lab comics and Powerpuff comics back then. And they were doing, you know, cow and chicken, God, cow and chicken, oh, had about a, cow, and chicken. cow and chicken had a comic book and Johnny Bravo had a comic book. And, you know, so this is, Kind of not a very good omen, I don't think, for the long-term viability of DC Comics as a comic book publisher. And we know that uh, they're kind of having a fire sale over at Warner Brothers, and they're looking at some different options. You know, uh, there were rumors last week, I think, that they could just bundle up the you know DC Studios and sell it off to Universal. And so if they're like, okay, fine, we're gonna you know take our other IP and stick it with like Dynamite, well then you can just take that over. You know, you can do that if you want Dynamite to publish your, your, uh, you know, Batman and Wonder Woman comics or whatever. You know, you can have them do it. Yeah, if it, if they can pan out the other stuff. Right, right. So, uh, in a statement about the partnership, uh, Nick Barucci, the Dynamite CEO and publisher, said Warner Brothers has been at the heart of entertainment in America and across the world for an incredible hundred years and home to so many beloved stories and franchises. We're incredibly excited to bring many of them with the biggest and most passionate fan bases back to comics for the first time as we work with Warner Brothers Discovery and wonderful creators to bring all new stories to the fans. Um, some of them, yeah, it's the first time they've gotten a comic, but a lot of them, it's not. And I'm telling you, uh, I'm telling you, this is not a good sign for DC Comics. I don't think it's a good sign at all for DC Comics. And everybody's just kind of like freaking, I mean, it's good for Dynamite, right? <laughs> I mean, if this stuff actually sells, but everybody's freaking out about the comic book industry. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so let's, let's, this is kind of gets into the main gist of the, uh, the video here is that Polygon a couple of days ago put an article out that basically agrees with everything that Comicsgate and YouTube know, right? YouTubers have been saying for years. But I, I am proud of Polygon. They did not take the opportunity to slam on YouTubers or slam on Comicsgate or any of that they stuff. They even acknowledged that people have been doing it for years. They did not so acknowledge. It's worse because they they didn't because they did. They have to acknowledge that it's already been being done, and you're all just you know late to the party. But they want to credit these people as being pioneers when they showed up way after the settlement was built. Yep. Yep. So I think it's starting to sink in. There was an article a lot of people were talking about the other day. Heidi McDonald went to uh, Jim Hanley's universe. They're shutting their Manhattan store down. That's mm -hmm. like one of the big comic shops. And uh, she basically went in and kind of was like, well, just and she literally said, your shop's not shutting down because of social justice warriors, is it? And it's like. He's like, uh, no, but you know, the comics don't sell and yeah, that's why yeah. we're going out of business. You know, like, I mean, if the comics sold better, we'd be fine. Um, so yeah, they're starting to realize that they're basically the comic book industry is realizing it's fucked. I mean, that's, that's basically it. That is the long and short of it. And I think when you see deals like this, Warner brothers is looking at outsourcing and dynamite's not going to pay you what DC comics is paying you. Mm -mm. Even if you get on one of those books, no. you know, they're not going they don't to have it. So they're talking about like the whole, they're talking about the comics broke me again. Again? Again. I thought How comics was come up. It has been coming up a lot because everybody seems to think that the comic book industry owes them a living. And there are more people that, that want to make comic books than there are to read the comic people books. People have been saying about these industries not paying people well, not paying people at all when they owe the money and screwing them over. And they keep sharing the story. Yeah, these dummies keep running up to line up and with their cup out. And then they get so surprised. Like, I can't believe this happened to me. It's like, well, what part of everybody telling you prior did you not understand? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so this is how much that, that uh, they did a, a, a survey, I guess, in Polygon. They did a survey and they asked fans what they thought comic creators were actually making. And they said that they thought it was between $75,000 and $100,000 a year. And those fans even thought it wasn't very much for the big two Creators, they actually make a hell of a lot less than that. Not, I'm not talking, um, you know, the, the people that are like top shelf Marvel DC guys, or some mm -hmm. of those people are making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, right? I'm not talking about them. Some of the people that have the Netflix deals are making millions of dollars a year. But if you're talking like your average IDW, Dark Horse, Dynamite artist, they're not making six figures a year. Mm -mm. They're probably lucky if they're making 25 or 30,000. They were talking about what the average actually is. 
I don't think they did. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, I can tell you. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Right here. Okay, this is actually that's the advance. I don't. I think that's that not is true. not right. That is not true. Okay, let's let's talk about we we have been talking about this stuff for a very long time. Actually, it's funny you found some of our old podcasts that we did like twelve years ago. Yeah, um, the Shadowbinders website when we were putting the comic online for free, which is a terrible business model, by the way. Don't do that. Don't give your comics away because nobody's going to pay you for them if you do. Um, but we did a podcast uh, with that too. And we've been, you know, I, I found a couple episodes where we we're talking numbers and stuff back then. And like, we haven't changed at all. People think that, you know, we got, you know, became hard asses or whatever. It's like, no, literally we are. We've been the, sound the alarm for a long time. We're the exact same people we were 12, 15 years ago. Like we just, every, everybody else changed. But it used to be that people seem to care a lot more about the business side of comics. Now that everybody wants to be a socialist because they realize there's no money. Right, but they still want it. to do comics. But they're saying about an average advance for graphic novels about thirty thousand dollars. No, I'm not sure where. No, because I can tell you for publishers that you know like work in like graphic novels that aren't main like the mainstream. Like you know what I mean? Like not like the um, Marvel or DC. It is nowhere near thirty thousand dollars. No, nowhere near that. So it actually, my understanding is it's gone down. Okay, so it was bad then. So advances for those of you who don't know, advances are basically a loan that the publisher gives you to give you money to live on while you work on the the book, right? But the thing is, is you have to pay it back. You're in the hole. So they give you a thirty thousand. Hypothetically speaking, they give you a thirty thousand dollar advance. Uh, you don't make any additional money until that $30,000 is paid back. Mm -hmm. They call that earning out. Earning out. When the book earns out, most graphic novels, the truth is, and this is coming from multiple people who have had multiple book deals, most graphic novels do not earn out. So a lot of these graphic novelists are basically living from one advance to another. Right. And the advance most of the time aren't even this high. No. And then you have, they have to divide that up, which I mentioned, for how many years work it takes you to get the book done. In this case, for $30,000, it might take you two years. That's $15,000 a year, which is federal poverty level. Thing is, they're not going to give you more money on a book than they think they can sell the book for. I mean, they still make money. They get all the money except for what they have to pay you and the printing costs and stuff. But they're not going to give you money that if you're not going to earn out. Like, they, they're, they're taking a risk on you. Oh my God. Now they're talking about unionizing. Look, okay. You can't unionize comment. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. 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 Guys, 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 sit your broke asses down for a minute. It made sense somewhat in the entertainment industry to, to unionize because there were large sums of money. There's no fucking money in the mainstream comic plus, book industry to be, to the, be had. Just because you pay dues. So that I want to be part of the, like, okay, it's like the screen actors. I want to pay dues. So that doesn't mean you're getting guaranteed work. A comic book union would be the kill shot for the Western comic book industry. 100%. 100% because they're already, the margins are razor thin. The comic shops are closing at an alarming rate. They keep publishers keep raising their prices just to cover the basic costs because we have a dwindling readership. Um, the page rates are being offered. Yeah, they're low, but they're. Uh, it's not like the publishers getting rich. I mean, you know? right or wrong, right this or wrong, is what's going to happen? And it wasn't always this way, but poor choices of poor hiring choices and story choices of late have led it to this point. Thirty oh thousand for graphic novel. I don't know where. Uh, I I could if you're somebody scholastic who, maybe. If, if, if you, you are already a name. If you have. If you are an established name. For most people that are coming in, it's nowhere near that. I can tell you. Okay, so I I just I mean this is this is ten years ago, but we were at one point in time Shadowbinders, Shadowbinders. We were actually talking about shopping this around as a reboot, and uh, the numbers I was given by our agent at the time. He said that he he thought the most he could probably get. We had a huge following. We had a way. we had a pretty sizable online following. He said the most he thought he could get, and he said it's actually he says probably not the kind of money you guys are looking for uh, because I know you're older, you're married, whatever. But he said I could probably get you fifty thousand for two to three books. Yes. Okay, and that's then he takes ten percent of that too. Right. You're owing them years of work for two or three books. And they very seldom pay it in one lump sum. And why do you think there's so many people that have book deals that work a regular job too? Yeah. I can tell you there's a lot of people who have, who have graphic novel deals that work a full-time job also. Yeah. They're talking about cartoonists dropping dead from overwork and getting sick. And I, look, this is the problem. Yeah, the pro mostly overseas. 
Trust me, they're not <laughs> dropping dead from overwork here. They're dropping dead from a heart attack or having their ass in the seat typing on Twitter all day. There, there are mo- a multitude of issues. I'm not like I'm not working that hard. I, here, I, I can have tell you that. I have put in some pretty tight deadlines. I, mean, I used to work in comics, right? Well, that's a difference because you work. I had a day job too. Yeah, you're not one of these people who's literally spend all day on kid. Twitter and blow their deadlines because they're on uh, their ex. I'm sorry, all damn day being activists first. Um, and people have a very unrealistic, I mean, this is just in general. And we see this in animation too, in any creative field, like people have this unrealistic expectation. They think that because they went to school for something, or they think that because they like to do it or whatever, that they are owed a living doing it. And the, the reality is, is it's, it's supply and demand and the supply side is saturated. There are way more people that want to make comics, animation, or write stuff, whatever it is, creative stuff. There are way more creative people or people that want to be creative people than there are consumers for their their product. And especially in the Western comic book industry, um, you know, there are a few bright spots. It's you know, graphic novels with like Scholastic. And again, it's only some of Scholastic puts out a lot more graphic novels than you hear of. It's not just all Dogman and Raina Telgemeier. They do put other books out, but nobody talks about those books. They're not buying them because they're not buying them. They, they put, don't earn out. They get yeah, they don't earn out. They put a bunch of stuff out there, but it's not earning out, you know. And uh, manga, manga is a huge bright spot, and it's not produced here in the U.S. No, you know. So this is about that new group that they announced. This is what they at, at New York Comic Con. Is that what this is about? The cartoonist cooperatives. I said if they were going to do something, they, instead of a formal union, they should do a co-op. And there the they are. Fuck, there they are. Anyway, it's not going to go anywhere, guys. I, it's I, not really that you're like, it's not like Lovey Space Prince. It's like, what the fuck? What the <laughs> fuck, guys? Like, look, I, I, I 100% agree that cartoonists historically have been treated pretty bad over the years. The thing is, is that we were talking about much larger sums of money. None of you are going to make the next Superman, Okay. And, and the creators of Superman got, got screwed. They got screwed because they were young and stupid and they got screwed out of Superman. Their families got screwed out of royalties for years when Superman was at his peak, when Superman comics and merchandise and movies were making banks, Superman under ruse, all that stuff. They didn't see jack shit from that. And they should have seen a lot more money from that. So, you know, I, I, I can, I can, I can see you making the case for, People who created characters that made a shit ton of money for their corporate overlords not getting it and being screwed out because they didn't have the or being screwed out of the royalties because they didn't have the the legal know how or whatever. Sorry, let's look at what they want though. Hold Uh, on, wait, wait, wait. The cartoonist cooperative's long list long term goals include establishing industry wide rates that meet the cost of living for all comics workers. That's not possible. Having a team that handles grievances on behalf of our members. Oh my right. God, can you imagine that shit? It's called Twitter. And regularly supporting our what marginalized the? cartoonists. So you're going to have industry-wide rates that meet the cost of living. They don't now, and the, and the, and the companies can't stay in business. They can't stay in business. You're going to have a team that handles every complaint, which are, th- every day there's like 20 more. And then, by the way, and of the, of the marginalized people are going to get pushed to the front of the line. Sign up and give us your money. I... I, I, I thought it was dumb that, that image comics had that union and it was basically the office staff. I mean, I can understand people wanting to be Gilbert, whatever, but again, you're dealing with an industry that has no fucking money. There's no money. There's no money. Nobody's going to hire these creators if they're, they're like, Hey, yeah, I know we can get this uh Tumblr artist for 40 bucks a page, but you want 450 bucks but a that's page. The, where do you think the money comes from? The, it, does, it, it doesn't come from a magical money tree. They have to like actually sell this shit and no one wants to buy your shit. And if you hire the people that's always doing having complaints and are the ones that complain all the time about being marginalized creators, you're going to have even fewer sales. Okay. Cause people who are good are going to lead with I'm good. Okay. And then they talk about, wait, I'm not done. Go back up. They said, we also want to establish an organization that allows for an exchange of skills Industry information and other resources between cartoonists and comics makers. The group's leaders have begun doing just that via a private Discord and invite-only forum. Oh, for fuck's so sake. So we're going to invite our friends, and then we're going to share information. Like, 
like blacklists. Like I was like the Whisper Network. Yeah, like the Whisper, because we know they're on. They have discords. They have but discords out there. It's only invite only. Oh, for fuck's sake! This is guy. This is not going to work. And it only this happens. When, it only works when we have, we have stakes in each other's well being. Seven hundred members who think they're going to get these be, these rates. Are there seven hundred comic books out there being published right now? I but know if we have seven hundred friends and, and invite only in this Discord, but you get to hang with them. And you know what? People that are putting it together, the bigger names, they're not going to sit there and just let you take their Hell biscuit. No. Hell it's going to no. be, you, you, we're going to help you, but you know your place. God, so, I can't even with this. Where do I think the money's coming from? I don't know. Invite only. So you're basically, it's a whisper network. Yes, pretty much. Pretty much. Um, so this is like, I mean, they're talking about the, the economic reality, but this is like, this is not the way. And they're talking about how, um, <sighs> You know, people are turning to crowdfunding and stuff like that. And, it, you know, there are lots of different. And look, the healthcare thing. Okay. So the, the Hero Initiative, this is a whole, this is a whole, God, this is a whole thing. Do you know how many sad, broken, old cartoonists there are in Artist Alley or there used to be an Artist Alley? It was very, very heartbroken. Mm -hmm. you know, break, breaking, heartbroken. They're, they have their hearts broken. They have, yes. literally have their hearts broken. And sometimes they have to get surgeries and stuff they can't afford. Um, and I've, I've, gotten to the point where I have a hard time even going to artist alley because I've run across people that like whose work I respected. And I'm like, here you are in your sixties and seventies hawking artwork you did 30 years ago in artist alley to try to put food on the table because you thought that the comic book industry was actually going to take care of you. And that's, what's heartbreaking because it doesn't. There is no, I mean, there's no long, there's no watch at the end of the well, career. Yeah, where, 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 do, where do you think it was coming from? And then here's the thing is like, I mean, if you can maybe understand if people who did it back when in the heyday, you know, or even like the seventies and eighties and even up into the nineties when it kind of you know started collapsing, you can understand why they thought that, but people since then you have no excuse because no. you know, so yep. you go in it and then like, why am I, you know, you need to all, you know, help me and do your know, fundraisers for me because I, kind of, you went in eyes wide open. So if it isn't the way you wanted it to be, you knew when you did it. You could have gone and done something else that would have taken care of you, but you chose not to. I got into it with a, a friend of mine who used to work in the comic book industry once over a guy that, and I'm not going to, and I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to attack anybody or whatever. I understand people are, but there, there were a couple creators that were like every other year on the verge of losing everything. And people were even kind of like, Hey, rather than having like a fundraiser, couldn't you like learn a new skill or something like mm -hmm. a normal person, like go get a different job. Uh, yeah. Anybody else that they'd have, they'd be expected to go and, you know, get a job or do something else to, to offset it. Look, I get it. I feel bad too. But the thing is, the reality of the situation is it can't take care of who they have hiring. Now they sure as hell can't take care of the retired people and no. everyone else. And if you went into it knowing, if you took a job knowing that it would give you nothing, you then you have no reason to complain about it later or nor expect everybody else to cover for you. That sounds mean. And I'm not trying to mean because I'm one of the people that actually is out there, you know, giving to people all the time and help, trying to help out. I just, as somebody who's been around and seeing this a lot, it's, it's like, but you had uh, you had options. You just didn't want to hear it. They don't want to hear. And this is the thing. This is the same mentality. Of, like, I, I'm not trying to be a dick, but you, a lot of you are headed for the same future that a lot of these creators have, the older creators have, because your mentality is, I'm going to do comics come hell or high water, even if the money is not there. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be somebody else is going to have to pay me. They're going. It's like you are assuming that in a couple of years time, there's still going to be a Western comic book industry. They're really, it's basically just, I mean, and again, this ties into Warner Brothers because if, if Warner Brothers decides, hey, we're just going to outsource all the DC characters to some, you know, whatever publisher will have them, then comic books basically become as important as, as coloring books. It's ancillary merchandise. And that's how these companies view it. Disney, I was told back in 2017, they were seriously considering outsourcing the Marvel superheroes and they tried it with IDW a couple of years later, it was like a year or two later. And uh, it failed miserably. If that had not failed, I think Disney might've been like, you know what? Let's just let somebody else handle the I just, comics. I just, know? I'm just sitting here like, and I'm trying back to the union or like this group of co-op and they're like trying, we're trying to get, you know, better rates across the board. And I'm just, I can't wrap my head around that. Cause I'm like, well, you can't get more blood from a rock. I don't understand how you think this is going to work. 
And I think above somebody as I talk about they're losing their medicine and and as a queer black disabled woman. And I'm like, you know, because it's not to say as somebody who has epilepsy or has seizures. No, you have to make sure you know you have all the check boxes. Like so yeah. Okay, as somebody who has seizures too, yeah, it's scary ass symptoms, and I hope you get your meds. But I'm like, really? Really? Yeah, this is this is not a this is not healthy. Uh, what, what is healthy? Getting a job that actually pays and takes care of you. Yes, I mean, it, not that, I mean that, that is, is lofty goal in general too, I know, but. All of these problems, I mean, this is, they're talking about AI and the existential threat of this and all this, you know, exploit practices, publishers. all these problems could be taken care of if only, if only people knew how to, you know, go direct to consumer and make their own stuff and get people to support them. And then they own their own stuff. And Did they, they say cut, that in here? Uh, they said, yeah, they said that, whether reimagining publishing, creating a safety net from nothing, or building a community that will serve artists both old and new, there's hope for the industry. But it doesn't come from the work for hire system, intellectual property rights, or the corporations that uphold them. It comes from the creators themselves. If only people haven't already been doing this for years. If only people had said, <laughs> hey, you're better off doing your own stuff and you're better off working outside of the mainstream comic book industry because it's going to screw you over. But one, that's hard. And two, you can't blame everybody else. And three, they can't say that other people have been doing it for years because they have to acknowledge a bunch of people they don't want to acknowledge. Yeah. And I am shocked that they didn't get in there. Well, you know, sure. Those comics gate people have some money, but they're bigots. So they don't count. It's like, well, yeah, they, 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 they are implying by, the, you know, not even mentioning it. But they're probably bigots with health insurance. But they could have been like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they could have been like, like, but there's hope because these people are doing it. They could have done that, but they didn't. That's what I'm saying. So this is what gets me. And I've been saying this since the very beginning. Like, you don't have to agree with somebody's politics or whatever, but you can look at somebody, something somebody's doing and be like, what are they doing? Why are they making money? Is it solely because of their politics? No, not always. Sometimes they're get, just giving people product they want. The mainstream comic book industry isn't giving a lot of people products that they want. So they're going elsewhere. Uh, you know, the politics might come into it for some people, but not for everybody, you know? And we've got people actively saying like, well, I saw a comics gate book at the comic shop. I guess I'm never going there again. I'm like, what the fuck? Do you know the politics and the belief systems of every person in every comic book that's on the shelves? Well, I guess you would if you're all in a discord together yeah, and you're right. all in a union and you can sign anti-rape pledges. Like, I promise I'm never going to, I'm never going to rape anybody. It's scary that they thought that was necessary. Like, though. What the hell? I thought that was implied. Like, what the hell? What happened to comics? When the fuck did this happen? Again, going back to you know us being doing comics and being in the web comic scene and stuff. The weird, the weird people that are in the comic book industry right now are the people that were in the web comic scene. 10 or 15 years ago. Yeah, and it was a lot of them. Yeah. A lot of them literally in some cases, literally some of the people that are involved is like, Oh, I remember them from the web comic scene. They were kind of a pain in the ass back then, but it was the same mentality. It was the same mentality. I want to do this thing. Therefore everybody owes it to me that I can do and it. I should be able to make this my living, my career. And there are people we fought with people. I've gotten on streams with people before back, back then. And I was like, Hey, yeah, Capitalism is a thing and uh, not everybody's going to win and not everybody's going to have a commercially viable product. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of different factors that go into this and, you know, and they just don't want to hear it. And then web comics, they were all turning on each other too. Like as soon as somebody from the web comic scene would get big or get a book deal or get, you know, make games or whatever the hell, and they got out of the, the, the bucket, here come all the crabs. Like you should yeah. be helping us too. That's right. We had a crowdfunder once and the one person was like, well, what's in it for me? A, a, Nothing. A competitor. Do your own damn crowdfunder, There's, I guess. Why would there be anything in it for You're you? You're a major we're, pain in the ass. We're, <laughs> we're trying to get our stuff made. What the, why does it matter? But, that, but that's mentality. It's basically like, we're all in this together. We're all gonna make the same amount of money. We're all gonna make our dreams come true. And it's like. They just wanna use everybody else, you know? Yeah. And the reality is most of these people, yeah, they're going to play along with, they're going to get in the group and they're going to play along with it and whatever. It's all about us. Kumbaya, kumbaya. First chance they get to stab somebody in the back, get themselves ahead, they do it. Oh, we've seen it. Multiple they always times. do it. They always do. They, you know? they take what you said, then take credit, repeat it back, take credit oh, yeah. for them, get themselves a biscuit. Um, anyway. 
we maybe maybe we were talking we might release some of those old podcasts on here just because people are like you you just showed up you've never been around you weren't doing anything until a couple years ago when it was popular to make i'm like "Uh uh-uh bitch been doing this for a long time and talk to people <laughs> and we have we have the proof so yeah i actually pulled them down off the site like years and years and years ago but they uh, some of them some of them age like wine i'll be honest some of them age like wine some, a lot of the information is outdated like some of like the things we pot- talk about there's no longer yeah. around people are like what the hell is that yeah but. people are gonna be like what the hell are you have webcom what the hell's going on but uh yeah it might we might we might do that I, i've thought about i gotta go back and listen to it make sure there's nothing in there's like really you know whatever but um, it's, it's interesting stuff because things have not changed at all. It's just what has happened is those people, the Tumblr people, the socialist people, whatever, they've, they've, they've bled into the mainstream comic book industry and they basically expect to make a living out of something that doesn't have enough money to support even a handful of people, realistically. So we're going to wrap it up. Yeah. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.